if you feel you're on a hamster wheel of bad dates, no dates, or situationships, and you can't seem to jump out of it, today I'm gonna show you the only five things you need to focus on if you want to find the love of your life. wouldn't be surprising if you've been attempting to attract your ideal guy for a while that you are emotionally exhausted not just at not getting what you want or worse getting the opposite of what you want but at so much conflicting information from every video every podcast every audio every well-intentioned advice by friends and family there's something different about what you should be doing that gets you pulled in 10,000 different directions. So what I want to do today is after having helped so many women to actually attract the love that they want, marriages and life partnerships, and I've lasted the test of time. I want for you to simplify things. And by simplifying, I'm not saying that they're easy because none of the things I'm sharing with you right now are easy, but they are meaningful. So instead of focusing on all these bits and pieces of advice and techniques and tactics, if you really slow things down and say, I'm going to focus on these five things for a month, tell me what your result is after a month. And then you can only continue if this is working for you. But I can assure you that if you take some time to really digest this, that it's going to make a huge difference, not just in your possibilities for connecting with someone, but in your own life today. The first thing that needs to happen is a profound, visceral feeling of love for your life today. That doesn't mean your life is perfect. That doesn't mean you have no problems. That doesn't mean you won the lottery. It just means that if you are secretly hoping that the guy is going to end the void that you're feeling about existence, I'm telling you right now, it's a costly mistake. Because right now, when you leave the kind of life that is fun, fulfilling, exciting. There's absolutely still room for vulnerability. There's still room for wanting someone in your life, but you're not coming from a place of your life is empty or lacking in meaning. When that is the case and you find someone, it's typically the wrong person and it becomes a very codependent and a very painful relationship. So start from the place of if your life is not feeling like sunshine in some ways, what needs to happen on your own, in your own way of working, connecting with yourself, connecting with friendships, finding meaning and joy in the things you're doing right now so that when you bring a guy to the table, he's adding something amazing to his own life and he's adding value to your life. It's more of a one plus one is more than two in this equation. Half plus half is less than one. Second thing that needs to happen if you want to create a long lasting relationship, if you want to stop wasting time on techniques that don't work is you need to get a lot of clarity about what your most important values are. I connect with so many women who tell me that they're looking for and they fill in the blank, amazing list of values of his character, discipline and kindness and compassion, someone who's ambitious and nothing wrong with any of those things. But when push comes to shop and they start looking for a guy, the number one value they're looking for is physical attractiveness or height or financial acumen. So when you become radically honest with what is it that you're actually looking for and you understand that you don't have unlimited number of wishes, you start with five. And if in those five, you have two cosmetic ones, I'm telling you right now, you're probably missing out on some of the juice of life because the more non-negotiables you add to your list, the more difficult it becomes to attract a person who would be a right partner. And, and there's values that are way more important than others. So in my world, start with character. I'm never an advocate of someone spending a life with someone who is not feeling passionate for the other person or feeling chemistry. But I do think that in this day and age, most people over prioritize chemistry to the nth degree. I think most people are sick looking for chemistry first and foremost, and then they're not finding it instantly and they're telling themselves that the guy they want is not out there when he might be out there. Just have to dig a little deeper, ask more questions, go on a couple more dates before you rule him out. The third thing that needs to happen, if you've been struggling at this relationship thing for a while and at this dating thing for a while, is you need to figure out your blind spot. Like not figuring out your blind spot means that you're driving on the desert highway with a broken GPS. The part of the GPS that's broken is causing you to circle again and again and again. So it's three nights and you keep coming back to the same time post. Why? Because there's something you're not seeing that's causing you to take a lot longer to find what you want or is guiding you to find someone who is the opposite of what's good for you. Now, talking about blind spots, if you don't know what you're saying and you're single, I've created a quiz that in about 60 seconds will reveal what, what's really stopping you from 
creating that relationship. If you want to find out why you're still single, all you have to do is go to the first link in the description. You're going to find a page that looks like this, answer a few simple questions. And within six seconds, you have two things. The answer to the question, why you're still single and a customer report based on your specific blind spot. That's going to show what's the number one action you can take today to attract the guy you want in a fraction of the time. Number four, you need an unshakable why. What do I mean by that? Well, if you're not really clear on why you're looking for an amazing relationship, or if your goal is to have a little bit more company or to not feel alone, I'm just going to be super dirt honest with you. It's not a strong enough why for you to actually navigate the ocean of crap you're going to have to navigate to get there. So unless you come down to an unshakable why that includes a spiritual journey, that includes a type of meaning you want to create, the type of legacy you want to leave, the type of relationship you want to create that's not just good for the fulfillment of itself, but perhaps even good for the world. What's the kind of love you want to share with someone? What's the kind of depth you want to experience? What's the kind of life you're committed to living? When you are clear and sharp in emotionally juicy ways as to why you absolutely are looking for this relationship, then guess what happens? When you go through the inevitable challenges and roadblocks and storms and tornadoes that will land on your path, you'll be able to figure out a way out of them. If your why is not strong enough, I'm sharing this with you right now so you don't waste time. If you haven't figured out your why, don't even start the search. Take some time to digest and really feel as many reasons as you can muster as to why you're committed, not just for the purpose of finding someone, but the person you'll become in the process of the search and in the finding the partner that you're searching for. If you're very clear about that, you'll be able to withstand the turbulence. If you don't, it's going to be really, really challenging. So mindset is going to be 80 to 90% of the whole journey. Strategy is important, but without the mindset, you're not going to get there. And the most important part of the mindset in my book, having seen what I've seen is to really be clearly committed to a why. Here's the fifth thing you need. You need that resilient dating strategy. So once you have the mindset, once you understand your blind spots, once you have a life that's fulfilling and joyful, and again, not perfect, but you're on your way to creating that kind of life, the thing that would prevent you from getting there is just the actual strategy. So I'm going to break down four things that are incredibly important in the strategy. There's more, but here are the ones that you need to focus on right now. The first one is you cannot depend on just organic or just online, unless you have unlimited time. If you don't have unlimited time, you need to master both online dating, this feeling that online dating doesn't work and it's just for losers and the guy you want is online, this is all BS. I've helped so many women find their husbands and they found the guy online and they all hated online dating and they all found it repulsive at the beginning. They wanted to take a shower, but I helped them change their mindset from the 50% of the guys in there should be great specimens to it's only 1% of men in there that will actually be a fit for you. If you understand that from the beginning, then it's okay. It can work. When you go to 20 guys who are not a right fit for you, you say, okay, great. I have a few more before I meet that 1%, right? But if you don't have that knowledge, then you're going to falsely expect to see a higher percentage of fits. And when it doesn't happen, you'll think the system is broken and then you'll throw in the towel way before it's time. Now, Organic means you need to be able to go out and make it rain when the algorithm of the app is not giving you enough rainfall. That means that you can go out, whether you go to the grocery store, to the rock climbing gym, whether you go to a meetup or sit down at a restaurant's bar and maybe next to you there's someone who's interested to connect with. You need to be able to start conversations. You need to be able to be approachable. Being approachable, making eye contact, smiling is huge. If you are circling around three single spaces, your work, your car, and your friend's house, then yeah, the guy's not going to find you there. But if you're able to get yourself into somewhat more of an uncomfortable but proactive stance, then you can go to more places, make more eye contact, ask more questions, and connect with guys who are single. The next part in the receiving dating strategy is you need to vet properly. If you start connecting with more men, both online and offline, not asking the right questions or not sharing your expectations about what the end result for dating is, is going to limit your chances. Because there's going to be many guys, as you already well know, that who are interested in the friends with benefits or who are interested in just having sex or who are confused at best as to what they're looking for. So if you're not being clear about what you're looking for, you're going to connect with many of these guys who are going to be super happy to not have a conversation with you and then just find out uh, 
maybe month number six or seven that you're severely wasting your time. So ask the right questions, including what are you looking for in a relationship? If there's something that's a deal breaker for you, do you want children? Ask that question before you go on a date. What are your thoughts on children? I don't want children. Why go on a first date with someone who doesn't want children? If that's a high priority for you. If your thing is you're a Christian, for example, and you are closed off to anyone from a different religion, then the guy's not Christian. Don't go on a date with him. Like be, be more mindful of who you connect with. And you might go on fewer dates, but they'll be higher quality. You're not looking for just a high number. You're looking for a good number of dates or actual potentials for you. The next concept you need to master in your dating in this strategy is you need to date them exclusively. Why? Because many women today, still this day and age, feel like if they start connecting with a guy and they really like him, they're going to drop everything just for him. They're going to stop dating other guys and they're going to focus on this one man. But if you find out month number two that he has a big flaw you didn't see a month number one, you're going to have to start from scratch again. And there's no need for that. If you're clear from the beginning that you're not dating anyone exclusively, if you have your boundaries in place, then if the guy doesn't want to date you because you're not the Eastern girlfriend, then he shouldn't date you. But if he's willing to connect with you and prove to you that he's a worthwhile human being with consistency, then just like you're going to show up consistently for him and just like you're going to be uh, expressive every time you connect with him, then you get through more time figuring out of the guys you're dating, which one is the best fit for you. The last part is you need to be able to deepen your intimacy. If you connect with a guy and things get heavy and physical early on, then you're not going to deepen in emotional intimacy. You're going to spend your time figuring out how to have more chemistry. Deepening in intimacy means you're challenging conversations. You're willing to express with time more and more vulnerability. You're willing to go the distance in asking questions that will reveal the truth about who this person is. When people start getting scared of losing a person as a result of really figuring out what their values are and how they've made decisions in life and how they would make decisions in the future, then it becomes a little too safe. And then you get to know this caricature of a person that is not the real human being you're attempting to connect with. So be willing to be bold, ask tougher questions, answer tougher questions. And in the midst of figuring out that space of who are you really, you'll connect with someone who will be the right fit for you. He will have flaws, he'll have mistakes. They won't be fatal mistakes, but he'll definitely have things you wish were different. And that's okay and understandable. This notion that you're gonna find the perfect human being is complete and utter BS. There is no perfect human being. You are, my dear, not perfect human being. Let's just start with that. So because of that, let's just make sure that you're not just pushing everyone that's not the perfect guy away for some unrealistic standard. At the same time, also make sure that you have certain standards that do have to be met to be able to connect with them. There's a fine balance between both. Hope this is helpful, useful, insightful. If it is, it means the world to me and my channel because it's how I grow in Ritual Women. If you click like and subscribe, a lot of women watch the video but don't subscribe and it does make a difference for me. So please do if you're, it's free if you're listening to this. If you want to continue learning how you can attract the guy you want without the need for gimmicks, manipulation games, or stupid techniques, make sure to watch my next video right here.